you're asked to use the graph below down here to evaluate the function at these different values and then write a piecewise defined function um, for f. Okay, So let's go ahead and take a look here. f at 0, that means what's the height value? This says what is the height value of the function when x is 0. So if we go to 0, we look at the function. This guy has no height, so f at 0 is equal to 0. Now let's look at f of 1. Well, this says what is the height value of the function when the x value is 1. So when the x value is 1, we go up, we find the height, and we're at a height of 1. Pretty easy, right? So f of 2. So we go to 2. What's the height value? Well, this is open circle, so there's nothing there. So we've got to go to the closed circle right here. And its height value is also 1. f at 3. We go over to 3. Its height value is 1. f at 4. Its height value is 1. And last, f at 5. Its height value is 2. Now we have to write a piecewise defined function for this. So what I'm going to do is, you can do this any way you want. Um, but I think probably the easiest way is to split it right here. Because this clearly can be defined as a linear function. Split it maybe here as well. Because this can be defined as a linear function, and so can this. So what I've got here is I've got a function. We'll call it f of x. And it's going to have three pieces. Part number one. Part number two and part number three. So part number one, well, what is this equation? Well, this function seems to have a slope of one, so one up, one over, so its m value is one, and its b value, its intercept, is zero. So the equation for that is y is equal to x plus zero, or just x. It's the identity function. Now this function now we don't have an arrow here, but let's assume that they did mean to put an arrow there. And we won't put an arrow over here because it looks like we stopped at a point. Now that's irrelevant. I, on an exam, I will put arrows or I'll let you do this either way, as long as you're consistent. So let's assume that there is an arrow over here. So we're going to say this equation holds for all x values strictly less than 2. So when x is less than 2. Now I didn't put an equal under here because there's an open circle right here. Now what about this guy right here? Well all of the values it takes on are 1. So it'll take on the height value of 1 when x is between 2 and 4 including it. Just like that. And then here it looks like we again we have a slope of 1 but our intercept, now that's a little bit harder to see so let's go ahead and see what our intercept is. We can do this one of two ways. We can take the two points that we have, such as 4, 2 here. Oops, not sorry, 5, 2. Okay, so we can take 5, 2 and 4, 1, and we can use those to find the slope and the y-intercept. So for example, I could say, okay, the slope is the change in y over the change in x, which is equal to... 2, oops, 2 minus 1, so 2 minus 1 over 5 minus 4, which equals 1, which is what we said. We said the slope of this guy was 1. And then we can say, okay, what's the b value? Now we can either look at this and count down, so we can say, well, if the slope is 1, then I must have to go 1 over 1 down, 1 over 1 down, that's between negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So the b value here is negative 3. Or we can do it out algebraically. So we can say, okay, y is equal to 1x plus b. I can plug in either 5, 2, or 4, 1. So let's use 5, 2. So 2 is equal to 1 times 5 plus b. So 5 plus b is 2. So b, oh, look at that, it's negative 3. So the equation is x minus 3, and that's whenever... Now, notice here that they both attach at the same spot, so I can either include the 4 or not. So I'm not going to include it here. It's really irrelevant, though. I'm going to say when x is greater than 4. So when x is greater than 4, 
we're going to use this guy. When x is between 2 and 4, we use this guy. And when x is less than 2, we use this guy.